Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome. And hello to Brother Paul, to Sister Sue, to Veronica and Celine in Ireland, and to Margaret and Victor in Lincolnshire, and whoever else is here, not logged in on this 12th day or night of our Advent retreat, you are welcome. You are welcome. And as you can see behind me, we have our nativity, the monastery crib that's over 60 years old, that I've had for a very long time. And what I want to say to you this evening is our theme is twofold. Francis shares with us his understanding of being content with the blessings God gives us. And I'm struck by the beautiful words by John Hen by Henry J. M. Ewan, walking in the presence of God, walking in the presence of God. So let us just be still and just let's put out a positive affirmation to the universe. And the one I'd like to share with you is called the Great Invocation. And I hope that you can hear me and see me okay. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth from the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. And now just sit back and enjoy this beautiful Irish ballad by Roma Downey. As I'm sitting in the firelight and turning back the years, I can hear my mother singing in the morning as she scrubbed our shining faces and then packed us off to school. All too soon, those days were over without warning. So sing me the songs of our gold and silver days, days filled with innocence and light. Not a penny to our name. We were happy, just the same, in our gold and silver days. In the parlor on a Friday night, my father took the floor. I can hear us join together in the chorus, singing just a song at twilight or the moon behind the hill. Now those voices all are silent, gone before us. Then we'd gather at the daisy field on Sunday afternoons. I can hear the songs, the stories and the laughter. Through the years we all were scattered, 
But the friends we made back then were the friends we could rely on ever after. So sing me the songs of our gold and silver days, days filled with innocence and light, not a penny to our name, we were happy just the same, in those gold and silver days. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a wee bit of nostalgia from the homestead back in dear old County Cork where we used to play that many, many years ago as young novices. Okay, well, let's open with a beautiful prayer or a reflection from Henry J. M. Ewan. We must continually remind ourselves that the first commandment re requiring us to love God with all our heart all our soul and all our mind is indeed the first. I wonder if we really believe this. It seems that in fact we live as if we should give as much of our heart, soul and mind as possible to our fellow human beings while trying hard not to forget God. But Jesus' claim is much more radical. He asks for a single-minded commitment to God and God alone. God wants all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our spirit. In the Gospel of Matthew and the Christian Gospel, chapter 22, verses 34 to 38, we read, when the Pharisees had heard that he, Jesus, had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. Lord, you have revealed your love to me, to all of us by coming into this world as a helpless babe, human in all except sin. Let us respond to this greatest gift of love by making your love a reality in this beautiful world, the Cathedral of God. Keep us rooted in your love and let us flower into a new person transformed by the giving and receiving of your grace. Amen. 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 I would like you now to join me as we come to walk with the Holy Family. And the journey this day is a lot less stressful because in the near horizon, you can see the outskirts of Bethlehem. But today, you walk with a renewed vigor, a renewed confidence from the gentle words that Mary imparts to you with each step that you take in retreating from your mind, 
your ego, your egoic self. And in retreating from that place of negativity and doubt and self-fear, you're actually going towards the real you, the real you. So just let's sit back and focus on our conscious breathing. If you are wearing shoes or slippers, maybe sandals, I invite you to kick them off and loosen any tight fitting clothing so that you feel the currents of the Earth Mother preparing. In breathing in, I calm my body. In breathing out, I smile, dwelling in this present moment. I know this is a wonderful moment. And now in breathing in, we become aware of our heart. And breathing out, we smile on our heart. I vow to eat, drink, and work in ways that preserve my health and well-being. Relax. And with each in-breath that you breathe in, you are breathing in the love of our forefathers. You are breathing in the love of the wise ones. You are attuning your mind, your body and your spirit to embrace your sacred footprints that you will leave for mankind. Yes, your sacred footprints on the desert floor where you took a leap of faith and listened to your heart, your teacher, the gateway to your soul, the gateway to Nirvana. And as you walk with Mary and Joseph, you go on a mini retreat, a day of recollection, a day of reflecting on what was and what is and what shall be. Be aware of your feet, your precious feet that have carried you for many moons. Be aware that they are no ordinary feet. They have been anointed and appointed by Gaia, Mother Earth, so that with each footstep you take, you leave love. And though others may condemn you for being too radical, too spiritual, or maybe lacking religiosity, or maybe just a modern day crank, who cares? What matters here is that you are the person you are meant to be. Focus on those footprints. And on the soles of your feet is written the word, I am. I am a child of God. I am love. I am the miracle of God. For he breathed his very breath into my being. Let's look at your feet again. 
Forget about their size and shape and the dust between your toes. Just focus on the beauty of your feet, for they carry a message of love to a world that is searching and seeking for what you have found here. And breathing in, you say, I calm my body. And in breathing out, you smile. You smile at your feet. Dwelling in this present moment, you know that this is a wonderful moment. And breathing in again, you become aware of your heart, your teacher, the gateway to your soul, the gateway to God. And in breathing out, you breathe out a smile to your heart. Now look at your feet again and remind yourself that these are no ordinary feet. These are sacred feet, anointed by God. And that's why you're here. For the Spirit of the Most High has already come upon you. And the Spirit of the Most High is wanting you to rediscover and reawaken your heart to who you truly are. Not the person others want you to be. Not the person your ego has perceived you to be. But to be the miracle. Come into the presence of love and experience the healing touch on your memories. Some may be joy-filled, others may be pain-filled. Release them. Release them to the light. Lighten your load and travel light. The Spirit of the Lord God is now upon you, guiding your feet to bring the good news of freedom from religiosity, a religion without soul, a religion that has condemned the children of God. And the Spirit of God is calling your heart to embrace the cosmic Christ, to be found in a helpless pain, who will bring you the good news that you are free to be the person you are meant to be. And breathing in, I calm my soul in the presence of God. And in my breathing out, I say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I come to be with thee. Take my feet and show me the way. Show me the way. For there is only one way, and that is the way to truth, transparency, integrity. And we are modeled by the Spirit of God, and our role models here are gentle Joseph, 
and the beloved Mother Mary. Let us reflect now. Let us reflect in the garden of our soul. Be still and smile. Smile at your heart. The gateway to truth, the gateway to love, the gateway to joy. Be at peace. And as you walk along this beautiful journey, you're drawn to take a book out of your satchel and you read these words as Mary and Joseph quietly contemplate. Usually we think of the spiritual journey as a return of all human beings to God. Francis though includes both humanity and all creation. But the people of Israel, who had a deep sense of connection with the land. Canaan and felt that it represented not only the fulfillment of human destiny, but the destiny of all creation. Francis knew the importance of creatures and earth in the culmination of our spiritual adventure. We are familiar with the journey of humanity toward fulfillment, but it is difficult for many to imagine that creation could be included, and rightly so, in this journey. This is primarily because we no longer feel the intimate participation with the world that past ages have felt. Our souls are not so easily influenced by creatures and things of this planet, at least not to the extent that we imagine them to accompany us on our spiritual journey. However, we find ourselves yearning, yearning for a deeper relationship with the world, one that is not based only on science and technology, but one that is relevant to the whole of human existence. We may realize more than ever before that the soul itself corresponds to the deepest meaning of the universe. Francis' own contemplative vision reinforces this institution. How do we rediscover a wider sense of the spiritual journey. In the spirit of Francis, we begin with a heart alive with the cosmic Christ. In other words, if the inwardness of our lives is grounded in Christ's love, we will begin to see physical reality as dynamic and holy and are linked to the human spirit. Francis understood that any relationship with the natural world centers on the cosmic Christ. Christ's historical presence influenced the very structure of the universe and it energized both creation and history. Through his birth, death, and resurrection, Christ transformed the universe and directed history towards its culmination. Just as creation flows out of the Trinity through Christ, it returns to the Trinity through him. The spiritual journey of earth then, is related to our own journey back to God. 
St. Paul describes Christ as the ground of all reality, the beginning and the end of creation. And he wrote to the Colossians and he said, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created. The word holds creation together and in doing so gives it a meaning and a purpose. The presence of the word in each creature and things gives all creation a fundamental harmony and interrelationship that unites it towards God's very purpose. To understand the meaning of the word today, we need to recall the Hebrew term Dabha, which refers not to our present limited understanding of the word, but to the creative energy of God that has the power to give birth to all creation. Colors, sound and expressions of the natural world all have the potential to reveal the dynamism of a word at the heart of things. The light that fills the eye, the molecules that make up matter, all overflow with divinity. When we stand in wonder, do we not recognize an invitation to see into the heart of all reality. Francis re reinforces the deep faith that the word is actually present in all nature and is always speaking to us of God and God's nearness to relations, sorry, and God's nearness and relation with revelation unfolding before us. The word then actively binds creation and draws it back to God. Earth, cosmos and all humanity yearn for home just like you and just like me. In what way has the natural world become a spiritual companion for you? And a short prayer. Triune God, strengthen my belief that the cosmic Christ is all and in all. Come to your feet. For your feet carry that message that you too are a co-creator of God with Francis, with Claire, with Columba and Hilda and Bridget, with Bede, and with all the great Celtic saints who left us a tapestry of love. They were the footprints for those of us who have taken up the chalice of love. And in our chalice, the hero scamos, the divine feminine within, we share not a goblet, but a heart. And we smile at that heart. We are the hero scamps, the mystical marriage, the twinning of flames. We are all born to be monks, some in service in a habit and others in the world ministering to the children of love as doctors, psychiatrists, nurses, canteen staff bus conductors, HGV drivers, road sweepers, chefs, waitresses. 
we are all monks in divine service. Let us eradicate the fear of what others might think of us when we dare to speak about the hero scammers. We are part of the mystical marriage. And that is why we're here, to unite through love, like Francis, like Jesus, like Gandhi, like Paramahanda Yogananda, like Patrick of Ireland, Columba of Iona, Hilda of Whitby, and many, many, many more. Now look at your feet. What do you see? You see the rays of Brother Sun and Sister Moon shining on them and anointing them because they have found you trustworthy and they're inviting you to invite them into your space and to allow them empower you take back your power from those who have wounded you and turn it round and let it become your greatest prayer. Living with mental illness following an adverse reaction to Prozac 19 years ago when it, my dear brother friend died of cancer at 42, sadly I experienced something I wouldn't wish my worst enemy to go through, but it took four years, four years of a living hell, but God had a plan that I should come from ego back to my heart. So my breakdown was my breakthrough. And though I live with depression every day, I don't fight it, I embrace it. and. I manage the dynamics of it by surrendering it to God and saying, this is your problem. If you wish me to be in service for you, with you, and you wish to show me what it is I must do today, then you know, and I know, that you will provide, that you will meet all my needs at the appointed time. And that's what alienates a heart, to fall in love and to become a part of the hero scammers, the mystical marriage. It's self-emptying and that nothing, painful memories, abuse, violence, whatever, we can reprobe them, reprogram them with the teachings of the esoteric scenes of Mount Sinai and that it brings us back to our God center. They are the founding fathers of psychotherapy and they lived 8,000 years ago and Jesus was in the scene. So we end our time together by giving the last word to Francis. Well, one of the last words. And this is what Francis says. My God and my all, envy can become a force that blinds and consumes me. And I don't want to be any person other than whom you made me. Calling me your daughter or son is a gift that comes from you alone. May my Advent experience deepen as I look at my sisters and my brothers with the eyes of faith and not with the eyes of envy. And he gives us a little plan of action. Of what are you envious? Consider 
Consider what it is that you really need and value in your life. Rejoice in the good fortune of another and say a prayer for someone whose situation may seem idyllic, but which in reality and unbeknownst to you or me may be a cause of pain and suffering for that person. For that person. And now I'm following my heart and I'm told to play this. Just bear with me, please. Here we go. It's a simple prayer. It's a prayer you know very well. But as you listen to it, say it with them and look at your feet. Smile on them. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is error, truth. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy and where there is darkness, light. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Mere ra, mere ra, mere 
Mere Ram, 